you came to me in that hour of need when I was so lost, so lonely. You came to me, took my breath away, showed me the right way, the way to lead. You filled my heart with love, showed me the light above. Now all I want is to be. To be with you, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Mustafa, Mustafa, ala Habibika, Nabika, Mustafa, Mustafa. Audo billah min al Shaytan al Rajim. Bismillah al Rahman al Rahim. نحمده ونستعينه ونتوكل عليه إنه خير ناصر ومعين ثم الصلاة والسلام على خير خلقه وأشرف أنبيائه ورسله أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد The topic of our series of lectures that we have started last week is philosophy of Islam and in this series of talks and discussions and lectures, we are trying to have a logical and rational approach to the basic principles of Islam. Um, as those brothers and sisters who has been present in the last lecture that we had, we discussed about the uh, process of systematic thinking we have um, discussed about how we should approach to the matter of religion. We discussed properly that we need uh, an independent investigation of the truth if we want to reach to uh, the right religion. And that's why this discussion has been designed to um, actually uh, reach and uh, find the path toward the right path. Um, concerning religion, there is a lot of ideas. Uh, the one idea says religion and politics is a recipe for disaster. Um, <clears throat> why? Because look at the whole world. Uh, wherever there is war is because of politics. And wherever there is uh, war, it is because of religion. And this religion and politics, these things are creating war all over the world. And we need to come out of the whole ideologies and philosophies, and we need to have um, a peace of mind. So this religion and politics things doesn't work for us. So. We don't want to have a recipe for disaster, so we just refrain from anything religious and anything political. Some people very proudly also, they say, no, whenever you discuss about God, he says, listen, I'm not religious. Um, or if whenever you talk about politics, he says, sorry, I'm not a politician. I don't like politics. Although all of us... Somehow we are religious and somehow we are politic. We find we have somehow our own ideology. At the same time, we claim that we are uh, not religious and we don't want to be religious. So that is the one idea. The other one is the old-fashioned uh, uh, saying um, of uh, Marx, Karl Marx, which says religion is an opium of the masses, <clears throat> which for centuries, the communist um, ideology has been um, talking about this issue to the whole East and managed to run um, their governments and their states based on the same, uh, what you call a slow, wrong slogan of religion being um, a type of um, um, opium for the masses. Um, well, 
somehow the communists in those countries were not facing the true Islam of the Prophet. Um, of course, we agree with this too, somehow, when it comes to the wrong religion. Of course, wrong religion is an opium. Of course, wrong religion is a recipe for disaster. A wrong religion is actually something which leads mankind to, toward disaster, and it is something like an opium for the masses and for the people. But we are not talking about the wrong religion. Uh, um, Marx and Lenin in his time, they were facing Christianity, which were in the time of um, what you call Tezar and the government of Russia in that time. Uh, of course, they were fighting a religion which can be a, a recipe for disaster. Um, or look at the religion which is just now at the moment in the Middle East creating big war. Uh, Daesh, uh, the sect of Wahhabism, the Salafism, the Takfiri group. Of course, this type of religion is um, a recipe for disaster. The situation which we have today in Middle East is nothing less a disaster. And that is reality. That is fact. But not all religions. Uh, we have right religions, which is a recipe for peace, recipe for, for harmony, recipe for greatness, recipe for silence, recipe for tranquility, and recipe for peace of mind. Um, we are not talking about wrong religion. We are talking about the right religion. The other idea, ideology, which is a little bit softer, this ideology says we are human beings. We have got intellectual power. We can think for ourselves. We can solve our problems. We can write our constitution. We can run our country. And we can rule based on our wisdom that we have. So we don't need religion. The greatest formulas of humanity, we managed to solve it. We have Newton who discovered that the Earth has got gravity. We have Einstein which has got the capacity to have so many scientific formulas sorted out. So they say uh, that human being has got intellectual power and intellectual ability. Based on the intellectual ability that you have, you don't need religion. If you have Einstein, what do you want to do about religion? If you have Newton, then, I mean, you don't need a religion. We can write our constitution, we can run a country. Look at all constitutions which all countries of the world has been run based on this constitution. All of them have been written by mankind. So we don't need religion. We good men come together, intellectual people will come together, the university professors will come together. And based on our knowledge, our science, the advancement of our intellectual power, we are going to write constitutions to run our life so we don't need a religion. So that is the other approach, that we don't need God because we have got knowledge. And based on our knowledge, we can run our affair. So, let us deal with this question. Um, do we need God or not? That is the side which they say we don't need God. And um, that is the reason that we are human beings and we have got intellectual power. And so we can actually be knowledgeable people, professors, doctors, and we can actually solve our problem. We don't need God. Now, what is our reason that we need God? Brothers and sisters, we have got, um, of course, that is good. That is good enough that human beings have got knowledge so they can run their affair. But there are problems with the human knowledge. That those problems are dramatically serious problems. It is serious problem. 
The first problem with the knowledge of human being is that the knowledge of mankind is late. And I explain to you. I will explain soon. The second problem with the knowledge of mankind is that it is limited. And the third problem that it is not neutral. Why we say that the knowledge is limited, the knowledge of mankind? What we know, compared to what we don't know, is an ocean compared to the drop. The drop is what we know. Every day that we are here, there is thousands of new scientific formulas has been discovered. And we are moving with the help of information highway dramatically and drastically moving toward vast knowledge that mankind still doesn't know about it. As much as we get more knowledge, we come more to the conclusion that we don't know anything. Look, Abu Rayhan Biruni is the greatest alim and a scientist of about seven, seven centuries ago he was living. To that extent that when Americans discovered the moon, one of the big holes at the moon has been named after Abu Rehan Biruni. He has got 120 books, 28 books, 700 years ago. Before Copernic has discovered that actually the earth is moving and not the sun, he has got a formula, has got a diagram in his book, in the book which is called Mal al Hind, he has got a diagram which shows that he has discovered that actually it is the earth which is moving and not the sun. Such a great alim. The last minute of his life, he was asked, can you give us an advice, what you know? He says, he says, the great alim and the greatest scientist says that the summary of my life, the conclusion of my life is that I know that I don't know. I know that I don't know. Avicina, Ibn Sina, Avicina, great alim, he has been asked the same question when he was dying. He said, it is enough for all mankind to come and sit and let me pose questions for them to write for the rest of their life and the question is not going to be ended. That's how much we know. So our knowledge is what? Limited. Fine, we have a little bit of a knowledge, that's true, but our knowledge is now limited and it is late. Now, why we say it is late? Why, it, why we say it is late? Look, a man who didn't go to school, نگار من که به مکتب نرفت و خط ننوشت به قمزه مسئله آموز سد مدرس شد. My dear one, which he never went to school any time, he became the one which the whole world would love him. Knowledge is late, why? Because... Wine has been discovered recently that it is harmful. The, um, all of these um, uh, drugs that we use, all of these things has been recently discovered. And the gambling and the rest of all of the sins which the people are committing every day here and there. 14 century ago, somebody came and said, all of these things are wrong, don't do it. He did not have a microscope to put the piece of meat of pork under to tell us. He has been informed by somewhere from above. So we cannot trust a religion, a knowledge, a knowledge which is late. It takes 14th century for the knowledgeable people to tell me what to do, while Prophet has told me 14th century ago. The other problem with the knowledge, knowledge as we said, it is limited. Knowledge is limited. He doesn't, knowledge doesn't have access to the metaphysical world. Only to the physic. What you can see 
and one what you can touch and what you can smell and what you can hear the five sins only beyond five sins knowledge says sorry i'm sorry scientists will not have no any access to anything beyond your five sins only things that you can see under your microscopes they will tell you what to do about it but if if you tell him anything about metaphysical world they will not able to tell you any translation about it like for example i have a dream that like for example in the next couple of months something is going to happen to me and it happens you go to a scientist and say sorry this is something very strange i saw this dream and exactly what i have dreamed it happened to me this man was dead he came to the dream of his son that son there is something i'm suffering in this world i owe to somebody 4 million to man and no one knows about it please go and you know talk to him they pay him the money for me to get a little bit of a rest here now which scientist can tell me what happened no one is able to tell me about the metaphysical world the telepathy which is completely scientific thing yeah you think the same thing that you are here now somebody united states in canada may think the same here mr vatani is coming from canada sometimes we have telepathies together he sits there and we think probably the same thing that is exactly what happens my brothers my sisters so here we have metaphysical worlds which is not possible for us to reach to them because it is out of the five senses that we have and then we have physical world yes of course when it comes to physical world we have got a, we have got a uh, access to the physical world but we i am not only physical there is another dimension attached to me as a human being which also i need the other dimension of me to be flourishing and to be something that i have to understand so our uh, approach to meta- metaphysical world cannot be possible with the science and the technology and the knowledge that we have so it is limited then our knowledge is limited to the present time we don't know nothing about the past only discoveries which is happening digging of some places and getting some bones and then putting it either microscope and then measuring how old is this piece of bone then we can realize yes like a thousand year ago or 5000 year ago a million years ago in this part of africa there are some human being they were living but we don't know what happened we have the burn city in kish we don't know what happened we have a lot of civilizations which came to this world and they have been demolished they gone we don't know nothing about them so here if we just trust our knowledge our knowledge is limited to the present whatever is happening in the last probably century they uh, it has been recorded because the camera has been discovered the tape recorder has been discovered the film industry has been developed probably we have some recordings of the ha- the last 100 years ago but when it comes to you know uh, beginning of universe what happened is the big bang a uh, true theory we don't know actually is the rest of the happenings of the history of mankind what happened for all of those men which they were living prehistory we don't know nothing about future we don't know anything about it even we don't know what's going to happen in the next one minute in the next one minute we don't know if the earthquake is going to come or not no one can predict no one can tell you so we cannot program for our future properly because we don't know nothing about the future 
We don't know nothing about the past, so our knowledge is limited only to the present situation that we have, and that is also another limitation. The second problem, the other problem with the knowledge, knowledge is very good, but knowledgeable people, there's no guarantee that knowledgeable people can be good also. Not every knowledgeable person is good. Look at the boards that we have here. All of these people who are sitting in the White House, these people are all knowledgeable people, my brothers, my sisters. In fact, it's a condition when you want to get employed in the United States for some departments. In any country, you have to have a little bit of a degree. You cannot go there and say, I am illiterate, I can't write my name and number, and they can give you a presidential post there. You have to have knowledge. Every single person in that board that you can see, every single, all of those generals, the president right at the top, all of these people are very, very knowledgeable people. They are graduated from universities. And the knowledgeable people of the world are planning for war. The knowledgeable people of the world are planning for disaster. Who has created Hiroshima and Nakazaki? They, the first picture. Who has created, is it illiterate people? Of course not. Who discovered it? It's all knowledgeable people. The scientists of the world, the people who are sitting with the, with the, def, with the faculties of universities, very uh, big universities of the world are involved in all of the discoveries of mankind. So it is knowledgeable people who come and who plan for war. Do you know how war has been created? You know, what is the first income of the United States? It's selling arms. Good. So if I am selling arms, and if I can't sell it, and if I can't sell it, what happened? I'll be bankrupt. So simple. I have produced computer, no one is there to buy computer. I have produced a glass, but no one is there to use it. So I have to close my factory. So simply what? What I should do? If I, have, I am creating weapon, and if I am producing weapon, should be war somewhere for me to be able to use it. And if, I, if there is war, I can sell my product. And if I, there is no war, then I have to close my factory. And it happened. This what, what I'm telling you, it is reality, my brothers, my sisters. A few years when there was no war, there was a meeting between the... Um, the uh, what you call the, the arm producing factories and the companies of the United States. They wanted an urgent meeting with the Mr. President. So when they went to Mr. President and said, what can I do for you? He says, sir, our warehouses are full of weapon and we cannot sell it. So Mr. President says, so it's well, what I should do for you. And simply those director generals of those companies, they says, create war. Create war. And then simply the next instruction is that in Pentagon there is a map of the world there. So, okay, where we can create war? Okay, now here is Europe. No, 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 no. They are very close friends of us. They, we cannot cheat them. Plus, they don't give money so easily. So leave, leave, leave Europe. So let's go to Africa. These people don't have money. We cannot sell our product. They don't have money. So where we can create war? Russia. Oh, the big, big man. No, you can't touch that side because there will be world war. So where we can? Yeah. Where money? The Middle East. Rich Arab guys. Very good. Okay. Now, let us see which country has got problem with which country. Yeah, Iran, Iraq, very good. Let us, this is my enemy. That one has got money, so let them fight with each other. We sell our arms. And they create war. Eight years, the war finished. They sell every product that they, you can think of. 
one of the one of the reasons of creation of war in the region is for the arm producing companies to be able to sell their products so it's all knowledgeable people my brothers my sisters it's knowledgeable people they are not damn people they are not illiterate they are all university graduated knowledgeable people who comes into the war houses and they def- and they plan for all of this problem daesh you think those people at the top they are what you call illiterate people no they are very knowledgeable people they are memorizers of quran probably and they know what they do they are doing so logic we are trying to be logical now those people who says that the science and the technology and the knowledge of mankind is enough what is going to be their answer definitely a knowledge which is limited i cannot trust a knowledge which doesn't know about the past doesn't know about the future i don't trust the knowledge which is not neutral i cannot trust i cannot trust i need someone i need someone which have the knowledge the whole package of knowledge as you know there is a hadith that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has only uh, what you call shared the one out of a hundred of knowledge with the mankind the rest of the 99 will come to us at the time of arrival of imam mahdi alayhi salam where is the other 99 part of knowledge is with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the people chosen by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we cannot trust the 1% and leave the 99% god has got the knowledge of everything from past and future god has got knowledge of me what's happening just now in my mind if these cameras can only record my face the camera of god can record my mind and my thought that mr husseini in time like half past six half past seven you were thinking this and you were saying that so you put both of these two movies before me say like you were not practicing what you were telling god has got a camera which can record six dimension of your life your thought your future your past everything up down knowledge of everything is with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so we can not trust limited knowledge of mankind and also he knows about all aspects of my life listen this computer the same computer that i'm using here it is um a, i don't know what is the i can't see is it um isuzu is it isuzu yeah this is asus asus computer asus computer has built this computer now definitely when mr panazza has bought this it comes with a catalog every product you buy a cell phone it comes with a catalog you buy a watch it comes with a catalog you buy a car it comes with a catalog every single product of any company comes with a catalog now god has created mankind how he can leave us without catalog a small device comes with a catalog now allah in his factory produced such a complicated mankind and doesn't give you catalog how how that can work the whole problem is that mankind is created by god but you follow shaitan's instruction how to run this device called human being that's the problem of mankind it's exactly like this asus is producer of this laptop but instead of me looking at the catalog which is produced by asus i have to go and get another catalog of sony and then i try to operate by this computer while using sony it's completely two different products my friend you cannot do that 
You have to use catalog which is used by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and written by Allah for us, for, for, for a device called human being. If you use catalog of Allah, you will have a successful use of this product called human being. And if not, then definitely you are going to use in catalog of shaitan. That's the problem. God has got all aspects of our life. He knows about our spiritual life. He knows about our physical lives. He knows better what to eat, how to sleep, how to wake up, how to utter salam, how to pray, how to fast, how to marry. Everything of our life, he knows better and he has given the, the instructions. The whole problem is that we don't want to follow Allah's instruction. So he knows the mechanism of the body and the soul. Exactly what is happening after you. What the whole human being, how it has been run. And also he knows about the past, he knows about the future, and he knows about the present. Everything is very clear before him. So when he gives me instruction, he and, and he, doesn't have, has, he doesn't have no interest in my life. If I worship him, he cannot be a greater God. And if I deny him, he is not going to be a lesser God. With my worship, he cannot be a better God. It is me who is benefiting from my worship, not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he does not have no interest in my life. It is all coming back to myself. So if he tell me do this, it is not because of himself and the interest that he has and the territorial uh, what you call interest that may somebody has, like all decision making of the world, he does not know interest. And if he says do something also, it's because of not having no interest in your life. He say everything for your own sake. So there we have to follow the instruction of such God, the creator who does not have a limited knowledge and knows all aspects of life. So we, uh, it is very much understandable that uh, then we need religion. Religion is necessity. Uh, logically, you see, as I said from beginning up to now, I never quoted one verse of Quran. I never quoted one hadith. All is logic which comes Alhamdulillah and inshallah if there is any question by you brothers and sisters and all of those brothers and sisters who are listening online now salawat my ummah my ummah he will say rasulullah on that day even though we've strayed from him and his way my brothers, my sisters in Islam, let's struggle, work and pray.